Raise your hand if you are someone in this room who actively recycles. You recycle every single day and you never forget. Recycling is your top priority. Not a lot of us, correct? How many people try to actively recycle? Like you recycle sometimes when you see that there's a recycling bin, but it's not your first priority. You don't go out of your way to make sure you recycle instead of throw something away. It's no secret that global warming is leaving a negative impact on our planet. And one thing we can do to help is recycling, especially recycling our paper products. According to ASIO Clean Tech on April 12, 2019, in the article written titled The Connection Between Waste Management and Global Warming, the manufacturing of products affects greenhouse gas emissions directly through the manufacturing process itself, while it indirectly affects emissions from the energy produced while running the manufacturing plant. What this means is that all of the plastic water bottles and the paper and the chip wrappers that are produced take up 65% of the planet's energy. 65%, that's well over half. Now, if we all dedicated our time and really tried to purchase products that focused on reusing paper and plastic and they use that, then it could cut down that 65% by half, which is so much, environment, so much more environmentally sound. Did you know that to avoid the potentially dangerous effects of climate change, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or the IPCC, has recommended a 40 to 70% decrease in carbon di dioxide emissions from 2010 to 2050. Today, I'm going to be telling each of you why the government should create a mandatory recycling policy through the three well-known terms that we all know of reduce, reuse, and recycle. And to begin, I would like to start by talking about reducing. Has, anyone, has everyone here seen the commercials or the articles, the magazine articles, or even just pictures on social media of Save the Turtles and all that? Yeah. So the Save the Turtles movement is a huge movement and has a lot to do with reducing. Now, we all have... We all have people, friends that we like to come over, correct? And when all of our friends come over, you know, we have to have a good time, you don't have to worry about stuff. But isn't it just the worst when you wake up in the morning and your house, apartment, dorm, whatever it may be, is a total and complete mess. All you want to do is wake up to a nice clean house and your friends trashed it and didn't even bother picking it up because they didn't care. Well, imagine how the turtles feel along with all the other aquatic wildlife. They're just swimming around, minding their own business. And they don't understand that the difference, the difference between plastic and food, because a lot of times plastic looks like jellyfish in the ocean and turtles eat jellyfish. So imagine how the turtles must feel when their entire home is a dumping ground for human waste. Reducing is a huge way in which we can save the turtles and all, all other aquatic wildlife. According to the news source NOAA Fisheries, what can you do to save the sea turtles written on June 6, 2016, reducing marine debris that can tangle or accidentally be eaten by turtles can protect their habitat. Some other ways that we can reduce are by reducing our showers by, to save water and reducing the amount of products we buy that come in plastic cases or coverings or paper bags or stuff like, stuff like that. If the government made recycling mandatory, it would help save all the aquatic life. Continuing on, I'd like to talk about reusing. According to the journal review, the environmental impacts of reuse written on December 28, 2015, reusing is an industrial process where worn out products are restored to like new condition. The products we don't reuse end up in a junkyard collecting dust for decades because not all products are biodegradable. The things that end up in junkyards are numerous. There's tire parts, car parts, t-shirts, pictures, paper, plastic, whatever you can think of and none of those things are biodegradable. So they sit there for hundreds of years, just collecting dust and taking up space in our environment. According to the case study, environmental impact of municipal solid waste landfills were in September 26, 2012 by Kenneth Pearson. The migration of gas from the landfill body into the surrounding environment presents a serious concern, which includes groundwater pollution, air pollution, and so much more. We reuse because by reusing, we're cutting down on the amount of space needed for landfills. If we just keep reusing, then we won't have to keep spending town, state, government money on making landfills in our communities. Landfills are expensive, they take up a lot of space, and they're not great for the and they're not great for the environment. They're not good for the air, they're not good for the soil. 
land fills are just not the best option anymore, which is why by reusing, we're making sure that a lot of those things that end up in landfills don't end up there. They get reused and they get used for other things. And half of the half of the things that we recycle still end up going into the junkyard. So we might as well recycle as much as we can. Finally, I'd like to talk about recycling. According to author Romano Shipper in 10 Reasons Recycling Should Be Mandatory on Planet Renewed, recycling is critical for managing the waste already in circulation. We can recycle paper products such as tissues, paper towels, toilet paper, plastic, and no matter what, half of the recycling isn't used. So, and it's sent straight to landfills, which takes up land area and is so expensive. In conclusion, as someone who recycles when I can and has participated in multiple beach cleanups, go green events, gardening cleanups and restorations, everyone can be a part of the solution. The government should create a policy in mandating recycling because through reduce, reuse, recycle, we can all do our best to save the planet and make it a better place. Thank you.